Hey guys, just before I get started with this video, I want to give a very quick shout out to FG Cuba. He's a Cuban channel and he had a load of his videos deleted, so he's just trying to build back up. So show him some support and go and check out his channel. Hello and welcome back to Guard Cube. In today's video, I am going to be showing you various different types of parity. I'm going to show you every single kind of parity in the WCA events. Square one parity, which is notoriously hard to learn, but I have a really easy way to learn it. All of the N by N parities for Edge, OLL and PLL, which are quite similar in general apart from PLL. So that's only really three algorithms in total, and I'm going to make it a lot easier for you, help you recognise them and execute them. But before I ju just jump into that, I want to quickly show you a little quality change to my videos. So I got some extra lighting installed so that my setup's a bit better. So here's how it looked before. So pretty dingy, and here's how it looks with the new lighting. So it's a lot brighter, and I can also do some funky colours if I want to, but I probably won't go with that, because I just think white is best for these videos. Also, I know that my mic is really horrible, sorry about that. I'm going to get a new one at Christmas, which would be much better, I hope. And also, also, just to say, we're on a massive push right now to 100 subscribers, guys. That is really exciting, and that's a big number, and I am going to be doing a giveaway to Cubes UK, and Q&A when I get there. So please, if you're not already subscribed, 65% of you are not subscribed according to my stats. So please subscribe and like the videos and help me get that push to 100 so we can all have a giveaway. Without further ado, let's get into the video now. So to start off with, I am gonna have a quick talk about square one parity. So it looks like this, you have a bar flip, but that doesn't really matter, and you have two adjacent pieces that need to swap, two adjacent edges, and the other side looks solved. So it's the same as what PLL parity looks like on 4x4. Um, these edges could also be opposite, but um, and it will still work and it will still solve it. And the way you execute it, it's a really long algorithm which I will put on screen now so you can have a look, but actually there's a simpler way. So the way I think of it is slice, and then you see we have a kite here, so then you just split that kite horizontally, slice, and then it's not the right notation, but it's an easy way to think of it. D, slice, D prime, slice, D, slice. Then you see we have a barrel on top. So you want to split this barrel diagonally. So you have two just to the side of the slice. And then you will see that you get these three star pieces on the bottom. So you just want to bring them across to the right and then move them up. So now you have a five star on the top. And then you want to cut this five star right in half. So you put these three pieces back on the bottom. And then you'll see that you have this block of four, one, two, one, or uh, a corner encased by two edges. And you want to just move that out of the way of the slice. And you slice again. And then you'll see that you have this little line of three edges. So move them out the way, slice. Move two of them back in the way, slice. Align the top here, and the bottom you want to do a D move, and including this edge as well, slice, and then as you see it's just uh, like D prime to kite kite, and then D to solve the parity. And if you still have a bar flip after that, then that's fine, the way you solve that is just by doing slice, U2, slice, U2, slice, U2. So that's square one. Next up is 4x4 OLL parity. So the way you recognise this is that you have an OLL case where the number of edges flipped is impossible. So you don't get OLL cases where there's only one edge flipped, that doesn't happen. And equally you don't get it where there's only one edge solved, so like here. So if there's only one edge either flipped or one edge solved, then you know you have parity. Or if you just have an unrecognisable OLL. And this one is a bit more complex to execute, however it's still not too bad. So you've just got to kind of go along with it, it's quite repetitive. R wide U2, and then you're just going to rotate down. R wide U2, R wide U2, R wide prime U2, L wide U2, R wide prime U2, R wide U2, R wide prime U2, R wide U2. 
and then what you'll see is you get a normal recognizable OLL case like this one that you can solve OLL on and then you can continue with your solve. Next up is going to be 4x4 PLL parity and the way you recognize this is that you have a unrecognizable PLL. So you see this PLL, it looks a bit like a G-perm, headlights, block, but if we look at the black at the back, there's also a block here. That's not a PLL. And also if we do like a normal PLL out on it like a T perm, what we're gonna get is this, where just two edges are swapped. So this is impossible on a three by three. So we have a special parity algorithm for it. And it goes like this. Write in a layer twice, U2. Write in a layer twice, U wide two. Write in a layer twice you wide two again and you'll find that now you have a recognizable normal PLL like this U perm. So you might also have this algorithm where it just looks like an um, opposite swap like this so like an H perm but only two of the sides are swapped and again you can just use the same algorithm R2 slice U2 R2 slice U wide two R2 slice U wide two. Next we have 5x5 five five, and there is only one kind of parity for 5x5 five five, and it is edge parity. So what you will have if you get this parity is you will have on your final edge of the cube uh, you will have the centre flipped and there is no way to solve it other than knowing this parity algorithm. So we have just used the 4x4 four four parity algorithm and this is almost exactly the same. It is R wide U2, R wide U2, R wide U2. And then this is the only difference. So instead of doing RY prime, when we do RY prime, we bring the middle layer as well. That R wide, U2. And then L wide, U2. Normal R wide prime, U2. R wide, U2. R wide prime, U2. R wide prime. So basically, the way you can think of that is exactly the same as the OLL alg, only when you bring the right side down for the first time you bring the middle layer with it. And Moving swiftly on to 6x6 and the first type of parity that you might encounter on a 6x6 is edge parity again. So what you're going to do is exactly the same alg as on 5x5, you just need to know how to apply it. So on this one, if you look at the what we've got here, think about it as exactly the same as a 5x5. So you have an edge here and an edge here and then the thing you must do is think of these two central edges as the one central edge on a 5x5. Five five. Okay, so think of this one edge is these two. So on 5x5, five five, when we brought the middle layer down and we brought that down with it, now we want to bring these centre edges down. So instead of doing just the middle layer, we're going to bring this bit as well. So the alg we're going to use is the same, so we go R wide U2, rotate down, R wide U2, R wide U2, and then when we come down for the R wide prime, we're going to bring both the middle layer and the first left layer down, U2, and then the remaining L layers come down, U2, R wide U2, R wide U2, R wide prime U2, R wide prime. Okay, so hopefully you got that. Think about it as the two middle edges are the one central edge on a 5x5. Five five. So now we have 6x6 six six OLL parity, and this is literally the exact same as 4x4 four four OLL parity, so I'll just go straight into it as you're probably pretty used to this alg. R wide U2, rotate R wide U2, R wide U2, R wide prime U2, L wide U2. R wide prime U2, R wide U2, R wide prime U2, R wide prime. So it's exactly the same as the 4x4 four four alg, but you turn all three layers at one time. So that's the only thing you have to watch out for there. As I already showed how to recognize PLL parity on 4x4 four four earlier, I'm not going to talk about recognition. I'm going to go straight into how you execute it. So for 6x6 six six PLL parity, it's the exact same algorithm. However, the way you're going to do it is slightly different. So instead of turning just one R layer, we're going to turn both the inner R slices, like that. 
and then we're going to do a U2, both the inner R slices, and then we can turn all three layers for the U wide too, both the inner R slices, and all three layers again. So that's important that you turn both inner R layers, and on the U wides, you turn all three U layers. For 7x7 edge parity, there are two different ways to apply the basic edge parity algorithm. So the first way is when you have this case, so you have to think of this as all three central edge pieces are flipped. So you think of all three of them as one. So you're going to just turn this layer, just the outer R layer, for the normal alg, R wide U2, R wide U2, R wide U2, R wide prime U2, but when you bring it down, bring all three of these layers as well, so all three centers. L wide U2, R wide prime U2, R wide, and there you go. The second case is very similar, but here only the central piece is flipped, so you're going to turn all three of these for the R moves, so R wide U2, R wide U2, R wide U2, and you're going to bring down just the center on the R wide prime, L wide, R wide prime, R wide U2, R wide prime, U2, R wide prime. The final case you can have is something like this, which can look quite scary, but actually, if you think about it, this is just both cases combined. So you just have to execute both of those forms of the edge parity. So we'll start off by doing the one with just the two layers. And then we bring down all three center edges. And that's going to bring us to the other case. So then we can just perform that one as well. And then we have solved the parity. Thank you very much for watching this video guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it and hopefully I've helped you cope with parity in yourselves a bit better. So if I, if I have then please like the video and subscribe. Let's have a massive push for 100 subscribers. Make sure you're subscribed and let's get to this giveaway. Thank you.